Hi, my name is Dan Radigan, and you're here where I live in New York City, which is really where I store all of my type books. I think type is such an incredible part of our visual language because it takes words, which is how people communicate, and it gives personality and tone to those words. Perhaps people don't even realize what goes into the typography that is around them all the time but it's definitely affecting them. If you are a designer or an artist or an illustrator who wants to be in control of the whole experience of what you're creating, you have to understand that typography is just another part of the palette. It's another tool in the toolbox. There's so much room for variety within what a typeface can be. Any typeface is really a collection of thousands of little decisions about how all these forms and shapes and spaces come together. The same way there's almost infinite variety in what you can do with music or painting or architecture. There's the same room for typefaces to become different things and take on different personalities for different people in different situations. In my role as a type director at Monotype, I work on typefaces primarily that are custom designed, where someone has come to us to ask for a new typeface just for the work that they're doing. Because I have a background in graphic design as well as type design, I often work as a bridge between the people who need to use typefaces and the people at Monotype who make typefaces because I understand both problems and the needs of both of those camps. My tattoos are, I guess, the most visible sign of what a nerd I am about typefaces and how much I love typography. Um, this collection that's been building for a few years of shapes that I love out of different typefaces. The letters don't stand for anything. They're just great forms that I've come across in different designs that I love. Um, the only one that comes close to standing for anything is the marching K out of part of the old Krispy Kreme logo, which can go from Roman to italic, depending on how I move my arm. The rest of them are just, I think, beautiful forms that inspire me and the typefaces that I try to design. People always ask me if I ever have a favorite typeface, and I don't. Um, my approach to typefaces is like serial monogamy. I get really fascinated with one typeface, and I use it for a while, and then something new and shiny comes along, and I want to get to know that and see what it can do. We associate so many things with the typefaces that are available to us because we've seen so many things use typefaces our whole lives. You really just need to start paying attention before you get to that step where you make the decisions about what to make. I think that if you are uh, someone who's studying design or working as a designer, you have to address typography somewhere along the process. It's such a vital part of how we communicate. You need to get to understand how it works and how it can help in the design work that you're doing. If you love typography, I think you should go for it and dive in. There's a lot of subtlety to working with typography, and even if you don't think you're good or good yet, just keep going. Understanding typography doesn't come naturally and it doesn't come quickly, but it comes from developing your ability to see over time and to ask yourself, have I seen a better version of what's in front of me or have I seen a worse version than what's in front of me? So that you can really get to understand what makes something feel right to you and what makes something look right to you. Go with your gut and then start asking questions about how those ingredients have come together. And over time, you develop understanding.